So here's one thing I want to rant about. Just had a question asking about if a specific feature in a specific piece of software is going to be a game changer. And my opinion is no, because almost nothing is ever actually a game changer. Case in point, when I did, <clears throat> we always look for like, what's the, you ever like see an interview and the, one of the popular questions is, what's the one piece of advice, one thing you did that made the biggest difference in your career? What's the one thing that we, there's never a one thing ever. Never, ever, ever. And people want that because it's simple and easy. For example, when I was the, the, the artist of the week on the local Lightning 100 show, it, uh, it was really cool. I mean, I, Nashville, the station that a lot of people listen to, got to hear my song about like 10 times that week. It was awesome to just drive down the road and be like, and here's a song lies from Joe Gilder. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a rock star, I'm on the radio. It was great. And there was a showcase show at the end of the week. Super fun. Fast forward to the following week, there was like three new Facebook subscribers, right? I, nothing quantifiably happened because of that exposure to 100,000 people. Is it because I suck? No, it's just, when's the last time you listened to a song on the radio and you pulled over to go find that person and follow them on Facebook? Probably not very often. Uh, you probably hear them on the radio for a year and they come and play a show in your town and you finally get around to checking them out. That's probably how it works. So what, you know, I didn't have all my eggs in that basket and thankfully I didn't because it didn't really do much. It's another notch in the belt. It's another step in the right direction that combines with a bajillion other steps to get you where you want to go. So no, don't expect one thing to be your big thing. You may have a big thing, but even that wasn't your one thing. It was the thousand steps you took before that that even gave you the opportunity to have the big thing, right? <laughs>「Tuesday to you. So today I was supposed to help with Owen's field day at his school, but he got sick or came down with a fever yesterday, so we couldn't send him to school, so I stayed home with him and instead of doing field day, we played video games all morning. I have so much money now. He loved it. Who am I kidding? I loved it. Needless to say, today's episode will probably be a little light. Came down to the studio to do Ask Joe. Welcome. It's Tuesday. We're here. We made it. And that was really fun. There's a good core group of people who show up and ask good questions. And there's just a good discussion, as weird as that seems, me talking and seeing a chat on the screen. But there's a really good discussion and it just sparks ideas. And people come back and say, you answered my question two months ago and I've released a song since then. Things like that. It's, it's really encouraging and fun and exciting. If you can ever make it, Tuesdays, at 1 p.m. Central is when I do it. We go live on YouTube. Uh, it's super fun. On the docket for today, uh, the band Sunday Muse, which is the band in Mix Together Season 2. I'm mixing another song for them that I just got last week. It's mostly mixed. I need to kind of top it off today. And I take a very hands-off approach to mixing usually, so that's no exception here. I've done the minimal that needs to be done, and it sounds great. I need to tweak the vocals a little bit and send it off. Great musicians, great stuff. I'm excited about this song. Got a few critiques to do today, mix critiques for people, and that's about it. If I can be completely honest, I'm not in the best of moods today. Just um, a little off, a little down. The one thing I don't want this Gildercam series, this vlog to be, is fake. Now, while generally I'm goofy and in a fun, silly mood most of the time, I do get kind of bummed out sometimes. Today, uh, gosh, this is getting, file this under maybe a little too much information, but I was watching a popular YouTuber while I was editing the podcast and getting it posted and scheduled and uploaded and exported and all that. And it was an episode where he crossed the 5 million subscriber mark and there was a, like a ticker watching it go from 4 million, 900,000, whatever, crossing 5 million. And there was a part of me that felt that I, because I don't have those types of numbers on my channel, that I am less than. And now I know that's not true. And I know I can go, I've gone down the path of making numbers be my thing that I am aiming for. And it never works. And there's never a number that's enough. But still, you have those days where you look at someone else and you can't help but have a little bit of jealousy or a little bit of comparing. Now, a few years ago, this would have sent me spiraling. I would have gone and looked up every YouTuber I know, seen that their numbers are bigger than mine, and stopped doing everything, and probably eaten a lot, and slept a lot, and avoided work, 
and spiraled. Thankfully, that's not typically the way I handle it nowadays, but it does still, it does still get to me sometimes. Not that I feel like I deserve it anymore, it's just there's a part of me that wants a number to cling to to get some significance from. A, I'm probably never gonna be a huge numbers guy. It's just it, the way, it just, I don't think that's in the cards anyway. But even if it was, I know that there would always be someone with bigger numbers that I would always wanna compare myself to. So how do I stay grounded? I think about what I do have. And I try to be thankful that just today I had, I don't know, 70, 80 people show up for a live stream in the middle of the day to ask me questions and hang out and talk about music. That's awesome. No, it wasn't 7 million people, it was about 70. And that's great, and if I can go deep and impact those few, if it's as small a number as 70 people, and I have a real impact, that's something worth celebrating, and that's a success. And I've gotta tell myself, I'm telling you this to really tell myself this, and hopefully you can relate, and this doesn't feel really awkward for you, because we, especially in the creative world, there will always be a better singer than you, always a better songwriter than you, always someone with a bigger fan base, always someone with a better turnout to their shows, always somebody with a bigger budget for their albums. You can go down the comparison game. It never, ever ends well. A better game to play is the look around you and find things to be thankful for game. That is something that even though I don't want to do, I make myself do it and it helps. Always looking over my shoulder Always looking up that ladder Never see what's right in front of me It's a little after 11 o'clock at night. Gonna head to bed soon, but I needed to export a mix that I worked on today. Just make sure I'm happy with it, send it off to the band and also wanted to kind of wrap up this episode because it's been a scrambled kind of weird day <laughs> and this episode will therefore be a little weird. Wanted to speak to what I was talking about earlier that the feeling of inadequacy and the comparing and all of that. This is something I've wrestled with and thought through for a long, long time. It's nothing new and I'm sure when I do Gildercam episode 10,000, nine years from now, however that math works out, I will probably still struggle with this on some level, right? And that's okay. A good way to wrap up this episode is with a song. This is one you may recognize. It's called Mission. And you know what? Rather than explain it, let me just play it for you as the outro music for this episode. That feels like a good plan. Let's do that. I got so much more to give. Three houses on boardwalk. Rents fourteen hundred. What are you thinking, huh? <laughs> what are you thinking? I want you to land on it to, so I can if win. If I land on it, you're grounded. <laughs> no, I'm not. Yes. 